What's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug, and man, I've played a lot of video games in my life. I couldn't even count them all at this point, and once in a while, you have that great moment that just sticks with you, that reminds you why you love playing video games. So this video is my top 10 countdown thus far of those moments in my life. Number 10 is playing through Resident Evil 7 in virtual reality and I was obviously as a new technology for playing video games I was on board in buying a PSVR as soon as I could get one my hands on one and yeah the stuff that I bought at launch like Drive Club and whatever else I played it was like this is okay this is cool this is you know the new thing to do but when Resident Evil 7 hit and I got into that world in RE7 when I was actually like you felt like you're in the house it was a full-fledged AAA video game in VR and there's nothing else quite like it I've played before that or since that. And I've certainly played a bunch of other VR games since then, but that for me is still the high watermark in VR. It's just, I can't play a game regular. I have to be in VR. It's just so good. And I know VR is one of those things where you just have to do it yourself. Like seeing it in video does not do the immersion justice. Number nine is that moment in Higurashi When They Cry, a visual novel on the PC. And if you watch my Game of the Year coverage, which you should, you should know I'm always playing one visual novel or another. And this one I had not even planned on playing. And I went into it totally cold, not knowing a thing. I got it in the indie bundle for like a dollar. And I'm like, sure, I like visual novels. I'll give it a shot. And the first, like, five or six hours of this game is just standard, cliche, slice of life, anime trope, whatever. So when that moment happens and the whole thing turns, I, I got goosebumps. Legit. I had absolutely no idea that that game series went down that path and it messed me up pretty good. And I think even knowing the twist and how that game progresses, it's still worth playing. But boy, oh boy, if you have no idea what's going to happen, and you're going, oh, it's a cute little visual novel, and then when everything turns, it's it's great. Number eight is Disaster Report, an underappreciated PS2 gem that was doing things I had not quite seen done, and on a scale and a scope that I had not really seen at that point on the PS2, it has an ambition to it, it has a, a heart and a vision to it. And there's one moment in particular where you are climbing a ladder and the world you were just st standing on falls out from underneath you. That just, I was at the time, <sighs> crazy. Those games for me are absolute classics that are definitely worth playing and I really hope they localize that fourth one that just came out in Japan on the PS4. Number seven is not so much a gameplay moment as it was a real life moment. And that was pre-ordering GTA 3 before I even had a PS2. Because I had played GTA 1 and 2 on like the PS1. And I had seen magazine articles before that game came out. Of what they were going to do with the 3D transition. What that game was going to contain. And the freedom they were going to give you. That kind of had been unheard of. The violence in that freedom. And I was like, oh, they're going to ban that. I need to buy that, I need to pre-order that game, just in case they pull it from shelves. Because that looks amazing and I need to play it. Of course, it wasn't until a couple of games later where they pulled San Andreas because of the whole hot coffee thing. So they did kind of fly a bit too close to the sun there. But I thought for sure 3 was going to get banned because of what it was going to allow you to do in a video game. And that might be the only time I've actually bought a game before I had a system just in case. Number six involves playing Mortal Kombat 2 in the arcades. Putting my quarters up, getting up, and there was some older kid, a lot taller than me, and I chose Baraka, and I was just cheap as hell with Baraka doing the blade thing, and I won. And I'm like, oh, I don't actually want to get beat up for real here. Holy crap. Like, that kid seemed really mad at me, and he was older and taller and obviously stronger. And I'm like, oh, oh no. But then here comes the next kid, beats me, I'm bad at the game, and then that was that. But man, that one win, like, I got chills from getting that one win in an arcade for reals. Especially since I am totally trash at fighting games. Number five is getting my first 
platinum medal in a Trials game. And you guys know I love Trials games. And this didn't happen in HD. It took me a long time to actually get better and get good enough to get that platinum on any track. Much less an extreme track. So that first platinum on an extreme in Trials Evolution was a one of those moments where you go, Oh, I actually might be halfway decent at this game. I can do this. Something so insurmountable that seemed impossible mere months earlier something became attainable. It's like a whole new world opens up to go, oh, I can do that. I can put in the time and practice and get better and I can do that. And that really applies to a lot of things in life is you put in the work and you can do a thing. Number four involves Mario 64 on the N64 playing that game on launch day actually earlier because KB Toys broke street date and therefore I got mine on a su on, a, on a Saturday or a Sunday. The point is there was no school that day and I was able to get home. I was in high school and just plug it in and get going in one of the greatest games of all time. A game that literally changed the face of video games at the time. When Nintendo had the giant brass balls to be like, look, here's our system. There's Mario and Pilot Winks. That's it. And you didn't need anything else. You just needed that one game that sold that whole system. And I still have that copy of the game. I still have that N64 and that launch day controller and they still work. Number three involves Earthbound because you can't have an Attack Slug video game list and not have Earthbound because the name Attack Slug comes from the game Earthbound. Now, a little bit of history here. Up to this point, I did not care for and did not play role-playing games. They were all kind of high fantasy, swords and sorcery, wasn't really my thing back in that day. Obviously now games like Dark Souls, Demon Souls, I love those, but at the time kind of wasn't feeling the whole high fantasy thing. And Nintendo Power is what sold me on Earthbound as a modern day RPG. And I feel like my love for the weird, wild, wacky, and under the radar kind of games all starts with Earthbound. It is unlike anything I've played before or since, and that ending just goes some places. It is way outside of the scope of this video to even get into all of my feelings on Earthbound, but if you haven't played it, you should play it. I think it is still 100% worth playing. There is a reason it has garnered a cult following all these years later, and good god Nintendo, localize Mother 3. Seriously. Number 2 is the first time that I beat Spelunky, one of my all-time favorite video games, and certainly my all-time favorite game of the past decade or so, and that is a rush. That game is so hard, so unforgiving, but once you learn how all those interlocking systems work, you realize it's a game about risk assessment and a game about situational analysis. It's any given thing in that game can be overcome if you just know what to do and how those enemy behaviors interact with each other. But even with that knowledge, you must still rely upon your reflexes to conquer the world of Spelunky. And the first time you do is just an amazing feeling. But then you realize, oh wait, the real game starts there. Because the first ending when you beat Olmec is not the real ending. You gotta go to hell. You gotta beat Yama. There's much more game to play there. And I must have played like 70 or 80 hours to even get to that point. But once you know, you know. And to say that I am extremely excited for Spelunky 2 this year would be a massive understatement. And number one has to go to the game that more or less got me on this train of being like, man, video games, I need more of those. The first time I saw Super Mario Brothers running on an NES. But I had obviously before then played video games, right? We had an Atari in the house. I would played like the Pong machines and that to me was not super appealing. Like, all right, Moon Patrol's fine, but they were all high score games. There was no persistence. There was no like, here's a level, beat a level. There was no real story there. So they were interesting little time wasters, but I didn't put much more thought into it than that. But I can very clearly and vividly recall walking down the street to a friend's house, walking into his bedroom and seeing Mario Brothers 
on an NES on this tiny little 14 inch TV and being like, what is that? This side scrolling, you beat levels, there were bosses, and I'm like, it was all just so mind blowing at the time. And I'm like, oh no, I, I need that. I need whatever that is, I need more of that right now. So that very year, I got my birthday money. I got my sister to help me with some of her money. And we pulled it together, we got an NES, and the rest, as they say, is history. And that more or less covers the last 30 years. So what amazing moments await me in the next 30 years? I don't know. But that's the great thing about, about playing a lot of video games is you never know when a great moment is going to hit you, so play more video games. Anyway, enough rambling from me. I'm a tax slug. Thanks for watching. More videos on this channel. Hit that sub button. See you next time. And I'm out.